Welcome back to another episode of Coast to Coast, and we have made it to the WNBA Finals. But before that, we're going to recap the semifinals, and then we're going to preview the finals. And then lastly, we're going to give our flowers to the player of the week. It's kind of be a segment that we're going to do every single week until the end of the finals, just because we think some players deserve some extra love. Um, Cal, you ready to get into it? Yeah, you know, every time you ask me if I'm ready, like it gets me so fired up, like I'm ready to run through a brick wall. So <laughs> let's get Good. in. That's why I'm like, I ask it every time. It's a, it's yeah. a thing. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. All right. The WNBA semifinals recap. We'll start with the one that just wrapped up. The New York Liberty defeated the Connecticut Sun three and one. We're going to talk some things from the series. I guess the first question is, Cal, what was your biggest takeaway from this series to me my biggest takeaway is just the fact that the liberty can win in a lot of different ways obviously they win pretty basketball games we've seen that all year but they can kind of win ugly too you know people like look at this team as they led the league in three-point percentage they had historic marks and lots of different assist categories uh it's really just like aesthetically pleasing basketball but this series wasn't always that they they had to play a physical brand of basketball you saw like they needed 15 rebounds from john quell in game four close it out uh they, they've been able to win games with stewie struggling from the floor the sun out assisted them overall in this series in in three of the four games which is crazy when you are talking about a team who led the league on both sides of the ball in assist rate they set records in a bunch of assist categories but it the sun were able to sort of take them out of that game uh and sort of you know take them out of some of that flow their ball movement that we're used to and they still didn't even need a game five to finish off this series so i to me just the fact that they were able to still comfortably maybe comfortably is too strong of a word but still able to come out of this series without really having to to sweat it out at the end uh despite the fact that i thought the sun played amazing and forced them to do some different things that we haven't seen all year uh, I, I thought that was a testament to just like the talent and the toughness on this liberty team yeah i totally agree and that's kind of part of my biggest takeaway too just like overcoming their own adversity because you have kind of things popping up like you mentioned like stewie you not really having the best playoff so far although you know in that game four she did really step it up a lot um but i just think like little things like that where it's not going to always go your way you're facing a team like the connecticut sun who were a serious contender and being able to get through that only dropping a game i think that's like the one of the most important things in sports overall is learning how to win even when you're not at your best um you see it in basketball you see it in tennis like those are the those are the people and the teams that kind of separate themselves from the rest um and that's kind of what i took away from this series with the liberty now going into the finals which we're going to talk about later they might not want to have games like that <laughs> where they have to overcome their own adversity because it's harder against teams like the aces who just their margin of error is just so much uh lower and they're going to make you pay for any mistakes that you make uh, but overall i think this was a really huge benefit for the liberty and we'll talk about players in the liberty that did well as well because well as well oh wow um, but, and we'll talk about our player of the week later and maybe a little bit now too, but you mentioned JJ. I'll talk about her first because like, I was really impressed with her. Um, I think she's been so important to the Liberty throughout the entire playoff series, like in that first round mystic series in this round against the Connecticut sun. And now she's going to be a huge factor against the aces. I think her presence is just, you, you, you can't not feel it. Um, like that one play in game four with the sun where she was the only one going for the rebound and she was like surrounded by like four sun players and she still got the ball. Like it's things like that, that just make her such an incredible asset to this team. Um, and she's done really well this entire playoffs. I think it's really cool to see her kind of go from, you know, struggling at the beginning of the season because that foot was still bothering her as much as she was saying, like she was fine and just kind of finding her way back into her role. And now she's playing, I think really good basketball at a fantastic time for the Liberty and remains like one of their most important players. Yeah. I love that you brought up that rebound at the end of game four. Cause I had that on my notes too. Like that play, if you had to describe sort of the story of this series and the story of JJ's series in particular, and really her whole season and how New York won this, 
in it, it, describe all that in one play you just put that clip and that, it's that I, one yeah i should have clipped that for this so that's i dropped the ball <laughs> on that one but that, that's the one yeah it's a microcosm it sums it up and i 25 15 and four blocks in that game like she was all over the place for 40 minutes and she's gonna give becky hammond migraines this week because yeah we'll, we'll get into it a little bit later but obviously that matchup has not favored the aces uh whichever other ones do that one does not uh with mm-hmm. jj and the way she's been playing so i i fully expect her to continue to come out in the finals and play the way she she did against the sun against her former team like how how bad you know, how, how cool was that too? Like, yeah, uh, that was important too. I think, um, just having, I know people like to say revenge game, but I think like even looking farther than that, just having somebody who is familiar with the personnel on the other side of the ball, cause they have that unique, uh, experience of being on the team. I think that's important too. Um, but because this is a semifinals recap, let's also look at the Connecticut sun, um, because they are now eliminated, you know, I think, and I tweeted about this too, their off season is going to be very interesting. Because it's now been like five years of making the semifinals. You know, they made the finals last year. They made the finals previously. But um, they can't really get over that hump yet. And it's interesting looking at their free agents. Beck Allen, Dewana Bonner, Tip Hayes, and Bree Jones are all unrestricted unrestricted free agents in this offseason. I think, honestly, I wouldn't be too worried about somebody like DB. Like, I figure, like, she's their probably not going to have problems signing her if she continues to play basketball if she decides that um which like as she should after the season that she had but i'm looking at players like beck allen or tip hayes who are huge for the sun this year and i'm kind of thinking i don't know if i want to lose them because this group is so close it's just a matter of like what do you actually do now so like how do you grade their season and where do they kind of go from here well, to start with, I would grade their season in A+. Plus. I like If you told anyone that this team was going to lose Bree Jones a month into the season after what they already lost and that they were going to come out and be, you know, really, in my opinion, closer to the super team tier than to probably the tier below them. They were pretty comfortably third, but that gap between two and three obviously wasn't substantial. They were able to hang with New York and that that was huge that it was uh, they probably don't feel this way you know after the sting of that loss but this season was definitely successful for them in terms of the offseason though and going into next year like you said there's a lot of question marks because that's four of your sort of big six or, or your top six and can you bring back all four like you said like you're you're not necessarily worried about all of them you're certainly gonna bring back some of those but I'm not sure if you're bringing back all four. And at that point, like you're, the Sun also aren't really, you're not looking at this team as one of those teams who's going to say, all right, we're going to blow it up. We're going to start over. We're going to enter the lottery. So you're they're, they want to stay in contention and you're going to have to bring in some new pieces if you don't bring in, uh, bring back all four of those because you can't, that type of turnover is is really tough to sort of rebound from. So I'm very interested to see is just what their offseason looks like and what the roster looks like next year. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, I think it's also worth mentioning that Beck Allen has had nothing but nice things to say about her time in Connecticut this year. Um, so I think, you know, that could be a factor in, you know, the success rate at which Connecticut might be able to keep her. Um, but yeah, no, we'll see what kind, what happens in the offseason. I'm very interested because it's a very interesting position to be in because like, your season wasn't a failure, but at the same time, it's like, okay, how do we get to that next step? Like, how do we kind of cross that bridge? Um, so yeah, no, it'll be interesting, but the Liberty make it to the finals and the Connecticut Sun fall in the semis. Let's move on to the other semifinal series that happened, which, you know, Cal, you uh, successfully predicted was a sweep, although it almost wasn't. Um, and we'll get to that in a second, but the Aces defeat the Wings 3-0. and Cal, your biggest takeaway from this series? Yeah, you know, I feel like I, I thought about kind of what I took away from the series, and honestly, it was mostly sort of boring things that we already knew because at the, like we already knew the Aces are really good. They they swept a good team in the wings. They got it done on the road in Game Three. I I don't know if we learned anything there. Uh, like 
the Class what I think, <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> let's just go with that. No, I think one thing that that I think though is that, and again, this is probably not new, but I think we should still talk about it. It's important. Like this Aces team really, really, really wants it, and they're not satisfied with the fact that they already won a ring, that they already broke records and did this and did that in the regular season. Like they, it would have been very easy to come out in game three and, you know, especially when the wings took a lead and, you know, in the fourth quarter to say like, yeah, you know, that's fine. We'll win the series in four. Who cares? And, but that like they play, I think I said this on another podcast. It might've even been this one, especially Asia, but really I think kind of everyone on this team just plays like they're down. Oh, two when they're up. Oh, two, two mm-hmm. up. And that's they're they're hungry. They're as hungry as they were before they won their first ring, I think. Uh, and especially Asia. I think Asia is the peak of that. I think Asia sets the tone for that mentality on the whole team playing like they're down. Oh, two. She comes out and, and she has had that look in her eye this whole playoffs. She wants it bad. And we know because the camera is too close to her face. In those <laughs> <post-game interviews. laughs> Yeah, they want to make sure that we can see that look in her eye. We have. So that mm-hmm. was uh, that. I think that's honestly it's it's not like a very analytical basketball takeaway, but that's just something that I really think uh, stood out to me. Yeah. One of my takeaways is that they're comfortable. That's they're comfy. That's it. That's all it is. And that's pretty scary. I think another takeaway for me is like it's good that they got that garbage game out of their system in that third game and they were able to get through because like whew, what was the final score like 62 to 64 to 61 they had 20 like, turnovers is one off from their franchise record and they still won the game which is almost goes brutal. back to what we talked about with the liberty you will find yeah. ways to win when you're not playing your best but yeah so they are very happy they got that out of the way i'm very happy they got that out of the way because i do not want to see something like that in the finals um but no it's it's important you're not always going to be like you're not going to have the best days but like yeah like you like we've kind of mentioned the common theme is like learning how to win um even on your worst days or maybe some of your bad days um but yeah let's look at the aces uh, the aces no we just did the wings excuse me um how do we grade them they have some free agents in the off season including diamond the shields who we didn't see play this year because of injury odyssey sims and sassy sabli is a restricted free agent um obviously had a breakout year one most improved player how do you grade the wings this season like what should they be taking away from this yeah i'm, I'm gonna give them an a minus uh, and the only reason the only reason i'm giving that is uh i do think we saw like some inconsistencies still uh we obviously saw their ceiling this year probably more than we ever have in the past i think lt did a, a great job uh getting them to reach that point and we i think right they were the only team to beat the sun the aces in the liberty uh but we we still saw glimpses of some of those growing pains from this young group so i'm gonna go with a minus that being said like like i said lt did a terrific job getting this team to take the next step i think from what we've seen you know the last couple of years where they sort of they got into the playoffs and that was like we're happy to be here that was enough that wasn't the case this year they won a series obviously it meant a lot to her you saw her shedding a few tears uh and and then coming in this offseason like you said i think satu sabli's Probably the biggest question. They do have the cap space to match uh, any any other teams offer on that restricted free agent uh, front. So so we'll see if she's a Dallas Wing next year. That's going to be really important for them. But they also like they have a lot of paths to staying relevant and maybe even getting better with or without her. They have two first rounders, including the I believe the fifth overall pick from the Sky that really almost was in the lottery if the Sky wouldn't have made the playoffs. Uh, and and who knows. What you end up, what you're going to end up getting from Lou Lopez Seneschal, who we didn't see play this year either, mm-hmm. uh, Stephanie Suarez, who we didn't see play. They have some of those young pieces who are going to be back as well. So hopefully, at least from injury. So there, there's definitely a bright future for this team. I think no matter what happens, and unlike the Sun, you know, like they're not really losing a whole lot of pieces in terms of free agency. Satu's restricted free agent, like you said don't have a whole lot of big name unrestricted free agents on this team. So I'm very excited to see sort of what uh, the future holds for Dallas wings, because I think they're going to continue this trajectory that they've been on the last few years. And 
and really be one of the top teams in the league. Yeah, totally agree. Um, and I think having a uh, coach LT kind of at the front of it and just kind of maybe bringing in a different type of environment where it feels like all the players, you know, really are really happy. Like she's has a way of just like motivating them while also, you know, like she just is such a good vibes. That's the word I'm looking for vibes. Like she's such good vibes, but she's also a really good coach. Um, and I, and I think that's good for a team that's like trying to work towards that goal of like staying competitive and one day like reaching, you know, the highest ceiling. Um, but okay. That's our semifinals recap. Let's move on to the WNBA finals because they are here. Well, technically they're like four to five days away. But they are here. Um, and Cal, you're going to be in Vegas, actually, for game one. So firstly, are you excited about that? I'm so excited. It's going to be a blast. I was, you know, the, throughout the whole, I, I was going to be in Vegas either way. And so throughout the whole playoffs, I was thinking like, you know, on one hand, like seeing a historic upset, like it'd be fun to see the wings sort of pull this out. On the other <laughs> hand, I want to be there. So go aces you know either way win-win but uh, uh yeah it's gonna be a blast i uh, love it um okay so and i guess the next question is about the script writers how do we feel about the two <laughs> biggest narratives of the preseason slash season coming together full circle in the finals because like it's very rare i feel like that something like that happens especially like this one um but yeah how do we feel about that like the script writers were right on the dot like it just all worked out yeah it, it, it's rare in all of sports you know not just the WNBA to see what the narrative is preseason and everyone talks about it and that is how it plays out and and not just that these were the top two teams but even sort of the arc of their seasons when you talk about the aces starting out strong because they've been playing together for so long the liberty taking a little while to gel and, and get past some of those early season injuries and then turning it on post all-star break. Like that is exactly what the script was down to the details. And yeah. <laughs> here we are, but I love it. It's amazing. I think it's great for us as fans. It's great for the league. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's going to watch this series because you have probably the best second best team of all time, whichever these team, one of these teams loses is going to be the, maybe the best finals loser of all time. And it, the the matchup between all, stars at all five positions on both sides is just going to be amazing to watch. So I'm all about it. I know. I'm like, I'm so hoping that we get close games that go all the way down to the wire um, to game five, because that would be extremely exciting. Um, but we'll see what happens. Well, let's talk firstly about the X factors for both of these teams, because um, there's always going to be, we, talk, we just talked about matchups. There's always going to be like these one players that we're like watching out for. Um, and on the New York Liberty, we kind of touched on this throughout the season itself. But would you agree that like John Quell Jones is the X factor? For them that is exactly who i had written down too and we didn't talk about this beforehand i promise we did not we but just connect like that now so that's that's who it is and and by the way no no shade to benajah laney for not having her we're going to talk about her in a little bit but oh yeah guys we are gonna like talk about i her. feel like we kind of left her out so far but th it's intentional and it's not because we don't love her it's because we're we're getting there mm -hmm. john cole jones x factor we we talked about a little bit already earlier you know in this show and some of our previous episodes but She's just such a tough matchup for the Candace Parkerless version of the Aces in terms of her size, her rebounding ability. It's it's going to be really important for the Aces to keep her off the glass. I keep thinking about this game in the 2019 finals against the Mystics, the Sun and the Mystics, where I forget if it was game one or game two, John Quill had 18 rebounds, nine offensive rebounds. The Sun won the game, and that was a historic Mystics team, right? They were heavily favored. Sun won the game. And in the next game, the Mystics committed as hard as any basketball team has ever committed to boxing someone out. They had a body on her like before the shot was even going up. She only had two offensive rebounds, and the Mystics won the game comfortably. And I, I am interested to see what the Aces do because to me – you really need to be sending, honestly, multiple bodies at her at this point. Like wh whoever's guarding Sloot, Kelsey Plum, go go in there and help out. 
you know, yeah. Sloot's not getting an offensive rebound. And if she does, good for her. You you need to commit hard to keeping JJ off the glass because that is the Liberty's biggest advantage, I think. And that is how they beat you down the stretch in some of those regular season matchups. So she's going to be the X factor. And I'm going to be interested to see how that plays out. Totally agree with you. Like with literally every single point that you said, that's why I had her as my X factor as well. Um, and of course, I'll talk about Lainey a little bit so that people aren't just like, why are you talking about her? Because like we love her over here. But I think, and I'll show this too later when we talk about her. But um, I think if you look at the stats, like anytime Benajah Lainey has scored over 20 points in the playoffs, the Liberty have won. And so it's very clear that not only on the offensive side, but also on the defensive side. And we'll get to that too. But like, she's just so important to this team. I think, you know, that duo of her and JJ are going to be so important in this matchup. Um, especially defensively and that's going to be extremely cool to watch um but yeah i think for me on the aces side my x factor i think is kelsey plum honestly um because i know that asia is going to do well chelsea gray is going to do well i mean i'm going to be looking at jackie too but i think and i say this as i'm wearing you know this sabrina slam shirt <laughs> I would be extremely nervous if KP uh, matches up against Sabrina at any point on the floor because I like I just think that KP kind of goes to work against her and that's like no shade to Sabrina but like KP's so quick and you have to stay with her on defense and I think if Kelsey Plum starts cooking in this series she's going to be somebody um, that I'm looking for as the X Factor for the Aces because like obviously we know People can get their buckets, but obviously, like, the Liberty are going to be looking to neutralize Asia. They're going to be looking to kind of disrupt Chelsea's passing. And so I think KP is my X Factor. Did you have an X Factor for the Aces? Yeah, I do. Well, I first off, I, I also think, yeah, Kelsey's a big X Factor, and, and especially how they either – how they handle or, or how they hide her on the defensive end with what we've seen in this matchup where Liberty trying to get her on switches and – you know, because uh, most of that Aces team is pretty good at defense and Kelsey's someone you can kind of exploit. But my X factor is Jackie Young. Uh, if it's like the, a lot of the regular season, they're going to have Sabrina on her. And obviously we'll see Sabrina. We'll see a lot of people on a lot of people again. They, a lot of switching and things like that. But Oh, uh, you already know KP's looking for that. Switch. Exactly. Exactly. So we'll see that matchup too. No doubt. No doubt. But uh, I, you know, if they do the same thing, which I think they will, they'll at least start out with Sabrina on Jackie and who knows, maybe they go some zone. I think Aces started out the last game in zone. We saw Liberty go a little zone against the sun, but if, if Sabrina is, is on Jackie, I mean, that that's another matchup you can punish. I think on the other end with the size and strength, quickness and athleticism that Jackie has, it was uh tip Hayes the other day who, who was saying, telling Sabrina, like, yeah, you, can't you can't guard, guard me. me, you can't guard me. And that's this. I mean, that's true of Jackie too. That's true of a lot of people. But Jack, <laughs> she can't guard Jackie either. Sabrina is a phenomenal player. Love your shirt, by the way. Thank uh, you. She's gonna get hers on the other end. But I, she can't guard Jackie. That's the biggest one-on-one -on -one advantage you have if you're the Aces on the offensive end. And uh, I, Jackie is, it, to me, has been. I, well, between her and Asia, but I, I think I would even lean Jackie as the most improved player on the Aces this year from their championship team last year. Uh, so to me, she's the X factor. Yeah, and she kind of came out looking like that right from right from the jump. Like immediately we saw like how much stronger she became, like her just her burst on the floor. Um, so, yeah, no, I like that. I like that X factor a lot. Uh, let's look at key things that we'll be looking for from each team in this matchup. Um, for me, like on the on the Liberty side, and it's something that we've talked about during the regular season, which is why I kind of cheated with the clip that I collected because I've used it before. Um, but it's the Liberty disrupting the Aces pass, uh, the Aces passing. Like like I mentioned before, you have players like Chelsea Gray who are just kind of the passing wizard on this team. Anybody really can pass. Like Jackie's really good at passing Asia as well. Um, KP is also dipped into her playmaking bag at certain points. And so I think if the Liberty's like focus on the defensive side is to attack the passer um, in addition to everything else that they're doing, then they're going to have a chance at success because this formula has worked for them during the regular season. It was one of the biggest things in, in some of their wins. And um, you know, if we look at their regular season, like, record it's two and two but it's three and two if you include commissioner's cup 
um, for the Liberty. So I just think that's kind of the biggest thing that I'm going to be looking for. Um, I think that's kind of the recipe to success if you're playing against the Aces. Like as much as you want to focus on neutralizing the shooters or like just neutralizing the offensive threats, but like the offensive threats includes the people who are passing the ball. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I kind of already touched on both of these, but I'm definitely looking for how the Aces play JJ, uh, you know, in, in any sense, but especially on the rebounds. And I'm, I'm looking for, on the Liberty side how how they attack Kelsey Plum again and how they sort of, uh, you know, take advantage of what they have on the offensive side within their backcourt um, and maybe some of the size that Laney brings if they can get her on switches. Uh, if they can get some of the aces in foul trouble, because we haven't really seen them use this that much in the playoffs, but they are deeper. The Liberty are deeper. They they played their all their starters like 36 plus minutes. A couple of those games, including game four against the Sun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they are deeper and they have it if they need it. So if if John Quo can can get that front court in foul trouble, either Asia or Stokes, then you got to go to the bench and get smaller, which makes it even harder when you know you're putting Alicia Clark or, or Jackie basically at the four. Um, or if you can get Kelsey. even Sabrina can do that. Like she did yeah. a great job of baiting back Allen uh, during that Sun series. So like if you're gonna use Sabrina for something, like you could use her for that honestly and get some aces into foul trouble. Yeah, and we've talked about on this on this show how Sabrina has sort of evolved this season in terms of her ability to get to the rim, which is gonna put pressure on. Yeah on you uh in that regard and possibly get some people in foul trouble you get you get kelsey plum in foul trouble if you get her switched on to sabrina then that's just uh that that's one more domino in the aces bench that you really don't want to have to go down if you're becky hammond in the finals so that's something that i'm looking for definitely absolutely do you have any predictions for the series yeah i'm gonna go liberty in five uh, Ooh. which means they're going to have to win a closeout in road Vegas. Game. Uh, mm. Yeah, I'm aware of that, but <laughs> I think, uh, I think that's going to ha- going to be how it's played out. I, th- I think they're going to split each, each way. First two games, next two games. I think Liberty, you're going to get it done on the road in game five. <sighs> I think I got aces in five. Um, All right. All right. yeah. And I think there might even be potential for like splitting it like one, one, one one um i don't know we'll see what happens i i don't know if i have i don't know how much confidence i have that the liberty would win in a game five on the road like maybe if they were at home at barclays maybe i would have had a little bit more confidence in that but we'll see like honestly at, at this point i don't even really care who wins like i just want a five game series and i like, want it to basketball. be like I want like script writers. You are right until now. Please write us a very entertaining final series. Um, and I'm very excited to see who's going to be finals MVP as well um, throughout these like next couple of games, seeing how players do. Um, which brings us to our player of the week. Uh, I was trying to think of like a good segue, but we kind of hinted at her throughout the podcast. And don't worry, we did not forget about her. But Nyjah Laney of the New York Liberty. She is our player of the week. I'm going to pull up this tweet to just kind of showcase some of her stats in the semifinals. Game two, 20 points, four rebounds, three assists. Game three, 20 points, eight rebounds, four assists. In game four, 21 points, seven rebounds, and five assists. So when I was talking about earlier that anytime she scores less than 20, the Liberty don't win, you'll notice that that tweet left out game one where they did lose and she did score less than 20. So I think, you know, but Nigel Laney has been, she's been the engine of this team for a long time. Um, I think if you think back to that 2021 season where she was by far the best player on the Liberty team. And yes, that was before the super team quote era. Um, But like her, like just watching her development over the last several years, you know, like I think winning most improved in Atlanta before that. Um, I think the Liberty kind of securing her as a long-term player has been really, really crucial to the long-term success of this franchise. Um, she just brings everything on the floor. She's very important on the defensive side. She is a key piece on that side of the floor too. Um, and I think without her, there's so many little things that just wouldn't happen. Um, Cal, do you agree? 
Yeah, I, she's the type of player who, you know, it's cool that she's dropping 20 all the time now, so people are noticing, because she does a lot of really yep. good things that people don't notice, too. Some of those intangibles on the basketball court. Her career arc has been so cool. That you talk about someone who wasn't really, like, the Liberty have these players, Stewie, Sabrina, who have been highly touted their whole life, and, you know, just come out high in the draft. And, and you have Benajah Laney, who really had to work for it. She got cut, right? And and now look at where she's at. I, I think... When you form this super team, it feels like she was a little bit of like the forgotten fifth starter and apparently still is because we all saw that graphic, which was dumb. She was forgotten on there, too. Uh, And uh, like that. Anyway, I don't need to get on a rant about that. But it felt like in terms of all the discourse, you had, you know, you have Stewie, who's won championships, MVPs. You have Sabrina, who's. Like the Sabrina, Sabrina, she's always getting at media hype. Sometimes she deserves it, sometimes she doesn't. And then you have John Quo, who was coming off an MVP just a year prior. And you have Courtney Vandersloot, who's one of the best point cards of all time, going to be in the Hall of Fame. And then you have Benajah Laney, who no one was talking about. And I, that's not justified because she's she's right there in terms of importance, like with these other four players. I would argue, you know, until the last game, maybe that she played significantly better than Stewie for most of this playoff. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and at what she does, I mean, y- you can look at those stats that she's been putting up 20 and five and five or whatever those numbers are, but you can also just look at what she does on the defensive end in terms of being able to switch and being able to guard all these different positions, but the physicality that she brings, which is so important with, What we talked about, you know, right from the beginning, this is like full circle, tie it all together on this podcast. We talked about New York being able to win different styles and win ugly games and win pretty games and win games where things aren't going their way and where Stewie's shots aren't falling. And the reason for all of that is Benajah Laney. She is the reason why they can win those type of games where they're not putting up 40 points in a quarter and when they're not breaking assist records is because Benajah Laney holds it together she's the glue on both sides of the ball so for her to like i it's just uh really remarkable to see like how far she's come and you know maybe dark horse for finals mvp if she plays like that who knows yeah no i i definitely agree with that just a couple more things on her i think after going to new york and like watching her in person after just what covering from afar for the last few years I saw how like locked in she is like during practice, during game days, like you can't do or say anything to break her out of that bubble. She is always extremely locked in and ready to do whatever she needs to do in order for this team to win. And I think that is such an important quality to have. Um, and like we talked about that hunger that the aces have, like Benajah Laney has that hunger every single day. Um, and it's remarkable to watch. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention was the, Laney to Sabrina connection on the offensive end of the floor in transition remains one of my favorite things to watch in the last three seasons of Liberty basketball. And I'm so, so happy that both of them are healthy right now at the same time in order for us to see that full potential. Because like in that first season where Benajah was in 2021, where Benajah was kind of like the best player on that team we saw some of it but then sab was kind of hurt throughout the whole year and then in 2022 benaja was the one that was hurt so like now they're both healthy which is like has been extremely uh cool and just like i'm so happy to be able to see that for liberty basketball because like i think they have a special connection too i know we've talked about all the moving pieces of the super team that was assembled in the off season and how a lot of them were new with each other and like hadn't been used to playing with each other but like laney and sab were together and they were two of the players who were familiar with each other who are, were part of that kind of like original group of potential so i think that's also important too that you still kind of have that on the team and we you said it like she's the glue of this team um and i think that's a perfect way to describe her um, yeah and just a couple of players who are with the team when they weren't very good yeah you know, they and now they're getting all the hype and all the glory and whatever but they were pretty bad you know not very long <laughs> yeah. ago and I, I think they both remember that, which I think is part of that hunger that you talked about, that fuel, you know, they haven't they haven't been at getting this type of, uh, you know, acclaim their their whole career uh, or their whole time in New York. So for them to finally get here is like 
that, you know, they're soaking it in. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, but Nigel Lady is our player of the week this week. Interesting to see who will be our player of the week next week after the first game or two of the WNBA finals, or at least I guess it'll be the first game of the WNBA finals because they're much more staggered out. So we got like two games a week now, which honestly, like, I don't know about you, Cal, but like with my schedule, I'm totally okay with it uh, to not have like games like every other night. So uh, yeah, I don't know how you feel about that, but yeah, I'm okay no. with it. I kind of love it and hate it because I love it for the reason that you just said. It, it gives you a little bit of like a break in time to process and things like that. But I also just like I'm, I'm impatient. I'm antsy. I love basketball. Yeah. I'm, I'm like I'm ready for the next game. When's the next game? I keep checking the calendar. But I, if I had to choose, I do think I do think this format's good. Yeah, and I I'm also like happy as well because like I'm also in the NBA. So this like the I think the last possible day for the finals is October 20, and that's like the first day of NBA preseason. So like perfect just like going right into it um or like the first day of the season or i don't even remember it's just all i know is that it flows very nicely um but anyway that's enough basketball talk for today make sure you guys stay tuned for her hoop stats playoff coverage throughout the WNBA finals cal will have boots on the ground in vegas on sunday uh so make sure you're following him on twitter at c wetzel 31 for all the fun um i know you're going as a fan but like i expect to see like a million tweets and clips and pictures and everything. From I'll, uh, I'll I'll get out as much content as I can. By the way, I think I'm going to have Stewies on the ground. Actually, my, my oh, Stewies, okay, not boots. Okay. So, we'll I'll uh, I'll have to show up in those. I can't wait for the for the pick of the shoes. Um, I love that. <laughs> um yeah so make sure you stay tuned into her hoop stats you can also follow myself on twitter at karina mm or instagram at karina mustafa if that is more of your what floats your boat i don't even know what this what I was trying to say words okay we've been filming for too long see you next wednesday on coast to coast <laughs> bye y'all